AMD is by far one of the most influential companies when it comes to semiconductors and even the main competitor to that of Intel. A little bit on the company's profile. Instead of reading this, guys, I'm just going to pretty much say that, yeah, this company just makes a lot of chips. They make a lot of GPUs, CPUs, processors, that kind of stuff. So if you would like to read the company's profile, here it is. You can pause the video and you can read it. But I don't really want to read this because it's just going to make the video too long. And honestly, knowing each individual thing that, that they do isn't necessarily important to doing a stock analysis. But with a current share price of $154.81, does this company's ticker price actually match these fundamentals? Hi there everybody and welcome to another stock analysis video. I did Intel a couple weeks ago and up until like a couple days ago I, I decided why didn't I, why don't I do AMD? I mean after all it is a really really hyped company and honestly like I love this company when I first bought it initially when it was like what $12 and sold it and now it's at $154. So, this is this is just like a Microsoft for me. But let's just see if this company is worth all the hype that is given. To put it into perspective, look at how much this company has actually increased within within five years. I actually bought this company when it was at around like ten dollars, as you can see right here. Early 2017, late 2016, it was around like nine dollars and twenty-six cents. And as of today, is at one hundred and fifty-four dollars, which is just an incredible increase. Starting over here with the calculator, we got the ticker symbol AMD, share price of $154.81, PE of 47.93 with a market cap of almost $200 billion at $186.9 billion. And with this PE of 47.93, this is already telling me that this is very, very much overpriced and it's just... I mean, we would like to buy this under 20, 47, more than double. Yeah, guys, this is screaming overpriced right now, but let's see by how much. Now, coming over here to the growth assumption, I am actually going to assume a 25% growth assumption. And the reason is because, well, they are a really, really solid company. I mean, they have taken a lot of Intel's profit shares. However, Intel is still a nice competitor when it comes to AMD, when it comes to making chips. So 25% does seem like a lot. Me personally, the fact that now Intel is actually going to come back and actually fight against it. Some people might think that this is too low. I personally think that this is just fine. And actually coming over here to Seeking Alpha, the, C the revenue growth year over year is estimated at 71.70% and the forward revenue growth is estimated at 41.58%. So I'm actually going significantly under with a 25% growth assumption, mainly just because I know that Intel is doing all this stuff and Intel is actually going to start fighting AMD really, really soon. Now coming over here to that net income, we got negative $498 million to $2.5 billion. Guys, that is a massive increase of 567% percent i mean in 2016 2017 they were negative 2018 they were they started becoming positive 2019 they did a little bit better than 2018 and just last year they just completely exploded and the reason for this is because of the fact that everybody was locked down people were having people were craving uh, going into streaming people wanted to play video games and all that stuff so that's essentially why the net income just completely skyrocketed. And by the way, I am actually going to think that in 2021, this is going to be significantly higher, mainly because of the chip shortage. Obviously, I'm projecting 576 million, but again, that is just based on the past four years. In my personal opinion, this is going to be significantly higher because of the chip shortage. Next, we got the free cash flow. 2016, $4 million to 2020 of $777 million. That is an increase of 99% with an average fiber free cash flow of 165 million dollars as you can see 2017 2018 they were negative by a lot 2019 they actually became positive and 2020 they just became really positive so i don't necessarily know if this is going to be an adequate assumption for the future because it really just depends on how this chip shortage or future lockdowns are going to affect this company next we got the revenue 4.3 billion dollars to 9.8 billion dollars that is an increase of 55.76 percent and as you can see well they've pretty much been pretty steadily going up when it comes to the revenue here and there i mean they get 2020 again they just had a massive massive bump in 2020 
and it's mainly because of the fact that the lockdowns was happening, people were just staying home. So not surprising, not surprising at all. Next, we got the total debt. And guys, a lot of people actually tend to overlook total debt. A lot of people just are like, ah, oh, we don't really care about debt. It, it's not really that important. I look at it mainly because of the fact that a company with more debt will be able to stay in the game longer than a company with more debt. So that's essentially why I look at debt. If things were to really get bad, if we were to go into a recession or depression, the company with less debt would remain in the game much longer. AMD in 2016 had $1.4 billion in debt. And as of today, they have $702 million in debt. Debt. That is a decrease, which is really, really good to see, of 151%, which is actually really surprising. But then again, in 2020, they were significantly lower at 572, and in 2021, they did go up slightly. I don't necessarily know what this could be. I was just doing research as to why they got a little bit more debt this year. And if this is really not that big of an issue, then, you know, this is actually a really, really good metric to see. Next, we got the shares outstanding. Again, Another important metric that people just tend to overlook. In fact, a lot of people just don't even know that this even exists. I didn't even know that this existed. And the reason why you want to look at this is because a company that issues shares is diluting you. You do not want a company that is diluting you. You want a company buying back shares in order to give you, the investor, a bigger piece of the pie. And as you can see right here, AMD, 935 million shares to today of 1.2 billion shares that is an increase of almost 23 percent of 22.85 percent which is just massive guys they are diluting you to no end and to be fair this is actually justifiable the fact that people love this company the, the fact that people just keep buying shares because the price just keeps going up well they're actually smart they're just selling you the shares because they just believe that you're just gonna keep buying and they're just selling you shares making that income which is probably the reason why they decided to buy debt and issue more shares because you either issue debt to make acquisitions or to do like anything you want or you issue shares in this case well they decided to issue shares really messing with the investor right now and lastly we got cash and equivalents and as of 2021, they have $2.4 billion in cash and equivalents with an average cash and equivalents of $1.5 billion. And with all of that said, assuming a growth assumption of 25% with a required rate of return of 8.5%, we get a target share price of $10.35. Adjusting for debt, however, this goes up to about $12.36 with a margin of safety of 5, 10, and 15%. With a dealer like to buy is at $11.74, $11.12, and $10.51. Guys, right now, AMD is very, very much overvalued. I mean, they were negative in their net income a couple years back. They were barely flat. They were just barely above water when it came to the cash flow. It's a very, very new company. They are competing against a monster that is Intel. And... You know, whether, yes, I understand that they are taking market share from Intel. You guys need to understand that Intel is still the dominant player in the semiconductor game. That doesn't mean that AMD won't get up to their level. That, that just means that you have to take assumptions that are reasonable, that are probable, not possible, right? Because anything can happen. Anything is possible. But what is the probability that this would happen? And in my opinion, 25% growth assumption is still way too much for me. But if y'all believe that 25% growth assumption is too little or too high, or if you want a required rate of return higher or lower, well, then I suggest you get this calculator and you play with the numbers yourselves. You can find this calculator in the discounted free cash flow calculator video where I show how to use it. And there you go. You can essentially just put whatever company you want and make the assumptions for yourselves. All in all, right now, this company is way too overpriced, guys. It's not worth this amount of, it's not worth this premium. That's just me. That's just my opinion. So with that said, like if you like, comment, subscribe. It really does help with the algorithm. On YouTube, you can follow my new tech sites, uh, Bitchu, Odyssey, and Rumble, where you catch my stock analysis videos, crypto videos, and only on those sites, exclusive videos, right? So with that said, Peace out and be on the lookout for the next stock analysis video.